I'm going to begin by modifying the default sky in Bryce so that it's just a little bit simpler to see what's going on. So hold the Alt key down and click on the thumbnail for the cloud height will turn the clouds off. I'm going to set the global ambient colour up to fully white because I'm going to use that to drive an effect within the volumetric material. I'm going to set the sky to custom sky and change this blue colour, hold the Alt key down, click on the colour swatch to uh, a little bit, something a little bit less strongly coloured. So like that sort of grey blue colour, something more like you see in the UK. So there you go, that's all the modifications really that we need to make to the sky to set this up. So in the create shelf, hover over cloud plane, left click and hold the button down, go over to volume, hold the control key down at the same time when you release and you'll get a volumetric slab in the default grey material. I'm just changing the family colour here to brown so it can be seen in the wireframe view. Switch the overhead view to keyboard shortcut 2, move the cloud back, keyboard shortcut 1 to see from the perspective camera view, lift the cloud up and increase its thickness so that this preview is a roughly box shaped cube. Now the thing with the volumetric slab is this wireframe representation, this object that you see, is actually extending infinitely, well, as far as the uh, rendering is concerned, in the X and Z direction, the Y direction, the thickness of the slab, side view here, keyboard shortcut 3, shows the relationship between the camera and the slab. Now the thing here to be aware of is that the scale of the materials that we're creating within the slab is dependent on your viewing distance because we're going to do world space so you can't change the size of this slab and modify the size of the clouds. That's going to be determined on a world space scale. But you can modify other things by changing the slab, the thickness, and also, which I'll show you later, how, how changing the proportion of the slab can affect render speed. But first of all, we're going to set up our volumetric material. So in the material lab, it wants to be volume. I'm going to set the diffuse color up to fully white. Set the diffuse value down to zero for now. Set the ambient up to fully white. And set the base density to 65. The edge softness to 100. The fuzzy factor I'm leaving 100 for now and the quality and speed is going to be set down to zero and that's going to remain at that value. So this in theory is the fastest rendering option but you'll see later that we can adjust that through other means. Now in terms of material options you want basic shading selected and sky integration which will allow the volumetric material to interact with the sky. In the preview we can set this to render with our sky so you see this lights up now through the ambient channel because the default was a lower value for this previewing and I'm going to set it also to the actual selection so we can position our camera in this preview underneath the slab and maybe get an idea of how things are going to look as we go along. For the other options we're going to need they won't become available till we put a blob in the channel we're only going to use one texture so I'll put a blob in the base density and hold the shift key down and click on the name go to basic and we're going to work with this check blue. And the reason I've chosen that is that so we all have a common starting point so that'll be in your library too. It wants to be world space mapped which it is selected and it wants to be alpha scaling so these two want to be checked world space and alpha scaling and this is the scaling uh, question that I began with where you need to be aware of the scale the size of the slab in relation to the camera because we're going to control this overall scaling through the texture here, edit texture, and this value, if you hold the shift key down you can reduce it by tenths down to 0.1 and this is the scale I'm going to work to. So everything relates to this scale and this should give us an appropriate size in our scene when it comes to rendering. So I'll just uh, show that they're all set to zero, check out that, and we're more or less ready to go except for there's one other thing to check here I think. Let's see we've covered alpha scaling world space that's good. We've got basics in the sky integration they're set at their default. Uh, yep I think we're ready to go. So into the deep texture editor. Right now what we want here is these controls open and I'm going to start by modifying this so that it gives us our output. But before doing that I'm just going to set these color values up to red, green and blue. We'll use those in a minute and then set this value so that it's only giving alpha output. Now where it's white it creates cloud, where it's black there's no cloud. So in the noise function instead of square I'm going to use fractal, standard, good, zero octaves will render faster, 
uh, these are irrelevant. 3D wants to be, and the frequency for this wants to be around about the 200 mark. And that fits in with the scaling that I showed you earlier and relates to the overall scale of the scene. So this works for these for this particular setup. Check out of there. Now, the transition between cloud and no cloud is rather soft, and you can modify that using a smooth clip filter. So if we modify this filter value here, so this increases the steepness of that line, the slope, then you can see we get sharper transitions. At the same time, I'm also interested in the color output, and I'm going to show you something now to explain something, hopefully. So I'll turn the color on, and you can see when I modify this output, and if I set it to linear interval 3, we get all three colors active. That this blue area is corresponding to the white. So, the, and the two are kept in sync when you make the modify the filter here. However, if we go to the final combination and do a smooth clip filter as well and modify, you can see it's not affecting the color, but it does affect the alpha channel. Now, this is a handy thing because it allows us to save ourselves on using another component. And every time you add a component, it makes your texture uh, take longer to render because you're adding complexity. So this is a way we can save ourselves a component and utilize two filters. Now, what I've determined, I'll just reset this, is that the value for this final combination filter wants to be 2.4, around about the 2.4 mark. So if you get it somewhere around that mark, don't be too critical about it. Now what this is going to do for us is it's going to change the relationship between the color output and the edge of the cloud. Okay, so in the final combination, this is the settings you're looking for. You don't, don't worry about how I determined this value, it's just through a lot of trial and error, it's not really important. Just make sure the filter in the final combination is set at this value. We're not worried about these colors, it's these colors that are going to count. Now, when it comes to setting the cloud pattern, we're only interested in the alpha output, so I'll turn the color output off for now, reset this filter, and modify the filter in the first component of the watch the output in the final combination, what you're looking for is separate blobs of cloud with quite a sharp transitional edge, like so. So these sort of values you'd be wanting to use. If I check out of here now and go back into the main view, you can see that the edge of the cloud is somewhat smooth, but it's sort of broken up shapes, which is what we're looking for on the cloud. So what I want to do is add some detail to the edge of this cloud. I can do this by going back into the deep texture editor and with this first component select, go into the phase and we're looking for fractal standard 0, 3D, and about 2,000. So this value of about 2,000 is how it relates to the overall scale of the clouds we're using. So if you change the scale of the clouds, you might want have to change these values. So this, you can see, breaks the cloud up. Now, you want this value to be somewhere in the range of about 14 to 18. So if you use the left mouse button, it, it changes very quickly. You can drag it. If you use the right mouse button, you can change it one spot at a time. So you can fine tune it. So let's try 16 and have a look in the main view how broken up the edge of the cloud is now. So that's broken the edge of the cloud up a little bit, but in parts it's still looking a bit smooth. So if I go back in here, in the final combination, although I can't add noise, I can add phase. So add another phase in here, again, fractal, standard, nothing, 3D, and this value set about 5,000. And this wants to go no higher than 7. So this, this will break the edge of the cloud too high, and the edge of the cloud will just break completely. So check out of here now, check out of here now, and we've got more of a frayed edge to our cloud. So it's looking a little bit more natural and more cloud-like. So now I'm going to bring in the color. So bring in the color, and bear in mind, because of this filtering that goes on in the final combination, I've been able to change the relationship between the shape of the cloud and the shape of the color. So I've actually brought the colors in so that they can color the clouds so that the underside is going to be blue, and then we've got a transition zone, which is green, and then some green going up the side. And this is going to add illusionary detail to my cloud forms. So uh, I'm thinking that probably these clouds are extending a bit too much across the sky. So I'm going to modify this value. So I'll just turn that off. I can use this to shrink the clouds a little bit further to make them smaller. So they don't 
fill quite so much of the sky. There we go. Because this area, I don't want this to be too much solid blue because that's there's no real detail in there. Uh, in that case, if I needed to push that further in, then I would have to start modifying this final combination filter value, which is a little bit tricky, and I don't want to go into that here. So we'll just keep things simple. So these colours now are going to give us the illusion of detail within the cloud, like light penetrating the surface of the cloud. So red is where it's going to be white. And then this colour can be a grey, and this colour can be a grey. But I want that grey to be slightly lighter than the other grey, so I'll bring it up here. So I've got white, light grey, dark grey. And now you can see how this is helping create the illusion that, that there's some depth to this cloud, some thickness. The edge is a little bit hard at the moment, and I was just using that setup really to show what the phase functions were doing to affect the shape of the cloud. So now we can use the fuzzy factor, and it wants to be between 300 and 200, so let's try somewhere like this. And uh, this will soften the edge of the cloud, it should make it look a little more realistic. As things stand, we've still got no diffuse light falling on this cloud, so all this is work being done by the ambient channel. It's probably a good time to consider the effect of changing the shape of this on this like banding effect you can see here. So if we compress this now, but leave the height the same, it actually compresses the banding. So this is something to do with the way the volumetric clouds build up. If you stretch the cloud in front of the camera, then the banding becomes more obvious. But there is a direction in which you can stretch the cloud where it doesn't really become that obvious. And stretching the cloud this way actually reduces render time. So if we stretch it out like this, it'll actually give us better render performance without this banding effect. So, or, or it being so obvious. So we can see now if there is banding, you compress the cloud, it takes longer to render, but it gets rid of that effect. So the overall, if we go back to this situation and give it a quick render now, you can see it's about the four minutes if we if we stretch the cloud out like this, even though the apparent effect in the render is the same, it halves the render time in this case. So it's just something to be aware of to try and increase the efficiency of your cloud rendering is that changing the slab is a way of affecting the quality which uh, in the material would affect both directions uh, x and z you can modify it so it's only affecting a direction that doesn't really matter as far as your renders concerned so you can reduce your render times uh, right so final modifications and to make this a little bit more realistic i'm going to take the fuzzy factor a bit more that'll hide more banding for us and soften the cloud still further uh, reduce the ambient and say try say, 35 for a diffuse value. This means now that light coming from the sun will highlight the edge of the cloud and it should look a little bit more realistic like so. So if I want this cloud to be thicker I can do this and I can get away with that now because I've compensated for that somewhat by stretching it out in the other direction. So the render time is still pretty good and we've got quite a bit of height to this cloud so it's got some sort of nice details going on here. And as you can see, it's not taking too long to render. If you want to change the color of the cloud, it's a little bit of banding there. We could overcome that by squishing it still further in this direction. And you can see the banding gets so close together that you can't really see it anymore. If we wanted to change the color of the cloud, we can change it globally. And if there's nothing else being affected by the ambient color, then you could change it just here and just make the clouds orange, for example. Another way of doing that, if you don't want to mess with that, is to go into the material and you change these, each of these values, to orange. You can influence the overall colouring through this final control, which is another way of doing it, but a little bit fiddly. So this can then be used to change the, the colours in, in other ways. But I, I don't really favour doing that because it's adding an extra level of complexity, but it is a way of doing it. Either modify it there either modify it through final combination and turn in on this control or do it through the global control. So if there's nothing else being affected by that, that's a perfectly valid strategy. If you've darkened that, you might find you need more diffuse output. You can achieve that if you've got some left here by turning this value up like so, or 
if you don't want to do that or you want more light on your scene so here's a consideration if you've got other things in like uh, mountains that are looking a bit dark you can turn your diffuse up here and then if the clouds looking too light turn that value down there uh, just to balance things out really this is just a final adjustment stage and and really that's it that's so it's as simple as I've been able to make it so far to generate something that looks quite cloud-like, but only uses a minimum number of textures and the smallest number of texture components so far. So I hope you found that interesting and useful and that you'll experiment with this technique for making volumetric clouds in your own renders. Cheers now.